for our invisible zipper, we need to do a little bit of setup before we actually sew. First of all, if you haven't worked with invisible zippers before, take a moment to have a look at the zipper itself. So with your invisible zipper, the coils look like they almost sit on the back side of the zipper. The other thing to keep in mind with invisible zippers is that typically, as the name suggests, you would like them to be invisible. With that, you should aim to have a zipper that matches the color of fabric that you're working with. In this case, if I was sewing my sample fabric into an item, I might go with a white zipper because it would stand out less. In this case, for example purposes, I will be using a black zipper. If your goal ultimately is to have a zipper that is visible and shows up, I would not recommend working with an invisible zipper, but instead you might do something like an exposed zipper so that it becomes a design feature. So with this invisible zipper, it is best practice when sewing in to have your zipper open. Another piece to keep in mind is that you can get an invisible zipper foot. And with that, it has a ridge that the zipper teeth actually sit in and it stands up those zipper teeth so that your stitches go in right under them. I'm going to work with a regular zipper foot and yes, you can sew in an invisible zipper with a regular zipper foot. With your invisible zipper, double check your zipper teeth and they should be able to stand up somewhat against the zipper tape so that it's almost sitting at an L. The other piece to note with your invisible zipper is that typically your invisible zipper will end up being longer than the opening of the zipper itself. So on my fabric, I have a marking at where the opening will end for my invisible zipper. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to stitch a little past that opening. And then when I go back and sew my seam, that is where I'm going to start my seam. So for this invisible zipper, I'm going to line up, be mindful of your seam allowances. And if this is an item that you are going to have visible seam allowances on the inside of, keep in mind to pre-finish those before adding in your zipper. If your item is going to be lined, no need to worry about adding in seam finishing. So with my regular zipper foot, how I like to sew in an invisible zipper is I will do a line of stitching just to hold my zipper tape to my fabric. And I can even change to a basting stitch. So I've just changed to a basting. I'm not going to worry about back stitching, but keep in mind this line of stitching is not going to be coming out. And so my first row of stitching, all I'm worrying about is holding my zipper in line with my seam allowance and the edge of my fabric. There's where my opening is going to end. I've got a nice little light pink mark. So I'm going to go slightly past that. Perfect. Trim off those threads. Turn your stitch length back to 2.5 or your regular stitch length. And what you're going to be doing now is you are going to be holding those zipper teeth up on its side. So you've gone from over to up. And you are going to start with a back stitch this time. And you are going to carefully and slowly sew along holding the zipper teeth up, also using the zipper foot to help hold those zipper teeth up. There's my mark for where my seam is going to end and I'm going to go just a little past it. Not too far past, just a stitch or two. And so you can see once my zipper teeth are down, I can't actually see that line of stitching that I just put in. When working with an invisible zipper, it is always a good idea to keep testing your zipper to make sure that it works. With your zipper teeth, when you're stitching it down, it's really easy to accidentally catch a line, and then that makes your zipper non-functional if you have a look at how the zipper pole is going up and down your zipper. And so you should be able to see just a little bit underneath my two rows of stitching. So my first was my row of basting stitch, and then my second was holding my zipper teeth to my fabric, nice and close to the zipper teeth. And so once you have your zipper done up, you can have a look at how close your fabric has gotten to that center of your zipper. If you want to try to get just a little bit closer, you can open up that zipper and put in an extra row of stitching. Once you're happy with that, open up your zipper again, and then you are going to line up the other side of your fabric to that zipper tape. Now keep in mind while lining up that you are lining up exactly to match everything else on the item that you're making. For example, if you had a seam going through the center of that zipper, you would want to make sure that those seams are lined up. In that case, I would do my zipper up and then I would line up my fabric. I would probably put a line of basting just over top of that seam, double checking that the seam was matching before actually basting my zipper down. Because I'm just matching my zipper tape to the top of my fabric, I have a little bit of an easier time. And so I'm going to open up my zipper, matching my raw edges and again I'm going to baste and then put a regular line of stitching in right beside the zipper teeth.
Now that you have that second row of stitching in and you have both sides of your zipper being held to the fabric, you are going to double check that your zipper is functioning and that it's working. Look at that, that's looking pretty good. Something to keep in mind with invisible zippers is that it is pretty hard to get it perfect, right? Especially when you have some tension on your fabric and it is pulling apart, which is one of the reasons why you want to aim to have your zipper matching the color of fabric that you're working with. So now that we have our zipper in there, we need to finish off the bottom of our seam. And so for that, have your zipper closed. You are then going to fold your fabric so that it is right sides together. And being mindful of the direction that your zipper foot is, we are then going to almost stand our zipper up so that it is at a right angle to our fabric. And you can sort of feel through your fabric, feel through what's going on. Double check where you want that seam to start. So I can see my light pink marking right here. And so I'm going to, holding my fabric, still working with the zipper foot, I'm going to move the bottom of my zipper out of the way. Also holding my seam allowance over so that it doesn't cause any problems. Working with a regular stitch length, I'm then going to start my seam. And again, making sure that that bottom of the zipper is pulled out of the way and my edges of my fabric are matching, I'm going to continue sewing. Now, because the end of my fabric doesn't extend very far, I'm going to finish off my seam with my zipper foot. If you were sewing a lengthy seam at this point, I might finish off my seam here, change the foot on my machine, and then finish off that full seam. Back stitch, needle up, trim your threads, and then once you've finished that seam, you've trimmed all your threads, open up that fabric, and you should see a seam right below your zipper. Go to the iron, press open that seam, that will help your zipper sit nicely at the bottom, and then you would be ready to move on to the next step of the item that you're making.